So a few days ago on our Facebook page, we have asked you a simple question. What is something that you wish you knew when you started the university? And we have taken upon this to answer it ourselves. And we came up with 12 things that we really wish we knew when we started the university. So the first thing that I wish I really knew was how to manage my money. Oh, and it. this for a long time was a huge issue for me. Even though every month I was making more and more money, at the end of each month I seemed to have less and less money. A big issue for me until I realized and learned something about budgeting and personal finance. Great starting point if you are interested in learning a bit about budgeting and personal finance is The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Clayson. I have recently finished reading it. It's amazing and it's gonna give you the very base that you need to understand the road to financial freedom. The one thing that I can already recommend you to do right now is to take 10% of your income and save it away for the bad day when the shit hits the fan and you need some money extra. The second thing that I wish I knew when I moved to university is that you don't have to go out every Friday. Uh, there is this huge fear of missing out that many people have, me included, when you get into university and you just keep thinking to yourself that I have to go to every party because this is the time of my life when I have to enjoy it. I have to be everywhere. I have to make friends with everyone. Think more about what your priorities are because university is really the time when you should discover who you are and you can't really do that when you're drunk at a party most of the time. Life is all about sacrifices that you make, especially the short-term sacrifices for the long-term gains. And when you sacrifice your long-term goals for that one party that you went for or those 10 parties that you went for, which completely sucked because let's face it, most of university parties are not that amazing. If you wanna ever get to like that point of like having those really cool awesome parties with, on, on a yacht with like hot models and stuff, you will never get there if you will be going to every single college party because that's how it works. Those are the sacrifices that you make. So you either sacrifice those shitty parties for the good ones all the good ones for the shitty ones now. Your decision. The third one is there's always something to do. Uh, one day I was exactly in the situation, all my friends were busy and I was wondering what to do. So basically I went to the city, I went to the, to the campus and I found my life passion basically by accident. I just came to the sports hall where the students handle their sport activities. I randomly pointed something and that random thing I'm pointed at was Latin dances. I came there, it hooked me up and well, now four years forward, you know, I teach it there and spend all my free time on it. But it all started because you were bored, you went out there, you decided exactly. to do something. I would, I would say that like, for some time you have to be sitting at home and be bored, so then you appreciate when you actually have something to do and well, it gives you the kick to start doing well, something. That's true. Like in my case, it was something very similar. For those of you who don't know, like I'm also a musician, I'm playing the guitar. And at the time, in Horsens, there was like literally no place where you could go and play guitar with your friends. There was no pub where there would be jam sessions. There was nothing like this. Uh, it was, I was really angry at it, but also it gave me an idea. So I get a few of my musician friends. I have rented a bar, I have printed out the flyers, and I made my own concert, and I made my own jam session. And from there, that point on, we made, I think, eight more concerts. And it's been going on for like two and a half years. More than a thousand people attending all together. There's been more than 50 musicians on a stage. All because I was bored and decided to do something about it and decided to make my own opportunities. Be bored. Just <laughs> get bored first, then pick a thing that you like and then go and do it. And don't let excuses and these things bring you down. So number four, you don't have to be the cool guy. And what I mean by this is that we all have envied some people at some point. Girls, they usually envy those Instagram chicks with like 10,000 followers. When it's guys, we always envy the guy that always picks up the hottest chick on a party. Yeah, I'm constantly envious. <laughs> but it's like, it, it's very stupid. Like you shouldn't really romanticize those people. You shouldn't try to be cool because if you ever have to try to be cool, you will be a fake imitation of someone who already is something. Just chill, just find yourself, because university, in my opinion, is all about this. Just take the time to figure out who you are, what you like to do, and once you figure out how to truly be yourself and what you like to do, then you will be the coolest guy to ever walk this planet, yes. I promise you. Number five, 
build a meaningful friendships. From my own experience, you know, when you enroll the university, you, know, you will meet a lot of people. You will build a lot of, even I think, Facebook friendships, which, well, no, let's be honest to ourselves. You know, best thing ever, man. They are the best thing like ever. 300 new people on Facebook since university. Yes. Feel fulfilled, man. Find those people that, you know, you can be chilled around. All I did was like for a couple of weeks, I was, well, actually not trying to be myself. I was actually really speaking to anybody, just try to search for friends. Might not be the best idea, but luckily at the end, you know, I found a couple of friends, which I wouldn't mind to consider them like a lifelong friends. And, you know, they helped me to carry through the, through the university and you know, they gave me this security. They gave me this base on which I was able to build on further and further. And so the sixth thing that I wish I knew when I moved here is that your work is going to suck but it doesn't define you. Unless your dad is some uh, rich Saudi Arabian prince who owns oil rigs all around the country, you will have to go to work eventually. And because it's university, 90% of the time it will suck. The great thing about working shitty jobs is that it will teach you the value of money, which is a very important skill. But it will also teach you how to appreciate good work because you've already been through the really bad one. Don't be afraid to pick up whatever work there is. It's not a shame to work, especially if you are just starting out in your life. Stick through it, don't let it define you. Come there, smile, work your ass off, build a good work ethics regardless of what job you're doing. And trust me, in three years you look back and you'll be like, holy shit, I'm proud of myself. Number seven is your degree will not matter. You really need to apply yourself. Especially in today's fast-changing world and information age, the degrees, they matter less and less. It's about what you know, and especially if people can count on you. Now, these are things that they will never teach you in school. These are the things that you have to study yourself. Don't just think about university as, I come here, they will nurture me into a full person, and they will just let me out to be happy in the world. It doesn't happen. The second most important thing is to build your network. Two or three people that you can already tell that they are worth spending time with, they will achieve something great, stick with those people. It will repay you greatly throughout the years. And speaking of university, well, how to take notes? Is number eight. Yes. What do you want to say about taking notes? I will talk about like maybe the Pareto principle. Sir? What? Yeah, I know how to take notes, so you know, I... The number nine thing that I wish I knew in Denmark, that taxes and fines are expensive. Now, I'm sure that you can remember that when you were a kid and you were growing up, you were always fantasizing about how amazing it will be when you are an adult, when you make your own money, when you can do whatever you want, when you can order pizza for breakfast and everything was amazing and you went for work and then paycheck comes and like phew, half of it just disappears and you're looking at, oh. Yeah, and then you have the things you have to pay, you know, like you know, electricity, also, rent, yeah. and, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the real world. It comes down all to the point number one that I made, like managing the money and budgeting for the month. This is where it really pays off to realize that, oh, there will be taxes and the fines are expensive and yeah. they will happen because that's just how life works. Like you'll get a ticket for biking on a pedestrian street or biking without light or wrong parking or you will be late on your phone bill, like anything can happen. When we were living in the dormitories, they increase the rent, you know, mm. from one semester to another one. Yeah. And you know, at the time I have to I have to admit, you know, I was living a bit on the edge, you know, always getting like a straight zero at the end of the month, and then just like a new salary came in. I really had to give it a thought, you know, what I'm going to do for the next month because I already well I set my life a certain way, and I have to you know change it from the scratch. Number ten. It's alright to feel lonely sometimes. Like okay. the transition from the childhood into the adult life is not an easy thing by itself uh, even less so when you are moving to a new country by yourself even less so when you're moving out from the home for the first time and there are many decisions that you have to make and unfortunately as it happens in life sometimes you will take bad decisions these can be decisions about relationships about money about university about studies and some of these decisions can make you end up being alone but i want you to use this time to really embrace the feeling of being alone and try to be more present when you are by yourself 
and stop thinking about what you could be doing else than what you are already doing in that moment. And it's gonna like magically transform how you feel when you are lonely and you're gonna start to enjoy that time as your alone time. What I love to do is just read a book, do 15 minutes of exercising or organize my clothes, organize my computer files, just do something that's strictly for myself, for my own better. And soon when you start doing these things and you start cleaning up and you start organizing the things, you'll find out like, I have a lot of things to do all of a sudden. And then you are not lonely and alone and bored anymore. You have a lot of things to do. There is a great power in solitude and you're gonna get really addicted to it once you figure out how to use it to your advantage. At the end, you know, it's up to you to do something. You know, you can do something alone, as Michael said, and if you don't want to do something alone and you are just feeling lonely, then stop thinking, why am I lonely? And just, you know, do something about it. There's another way. Yeah. Which sort of brings me to the point number 11. Oh, well, I made a bridge for it. And it is the importance of reaching out of your comfort zone. The first day when my father just left me, he closed the door and I realized, oh shit, I'm here alone. And you know, I had no idea what to do. Oh, I remember I had like four days to the beginning of semester. So for those four days, I was just sort of wandering around. And then the school started and I just like slept myself and I said, okay, Aero, it's time to do something about it. And then for like the next week, it was like a roller coaster for me. I was just doing everything with everybody, but at the end, I had a really good feeling about it. And luckily, I got results, you know, as I mentioned. In this time, when I was going outside of comfort zone, I was able to meet all the people I needed for the next three years of my life in Denmark. And now finally, number 12, and well, this one is a biggie, at least for me, is how to manage your sleep. Plus, you know, how to manage your day in general. I have to admit I'm not good at this and I managed to go like two, three days. I started feeling really good and then I just, one day I just blew it and I disrupted completely. Well, if you're going to attend the school or if you're going to work, I think, you know, the external circumstances helps you with this, you know, because, you know, you cannot really afford to miss school. You cannot really afford to not go to work, right? Even Jordan Peterson, really great American psychologist, he suggests all of his patients, which are coming to him with the depression, that the first thing they should really start doing is setting up an alarm at an exact same time every single day. There is a huge psychological reason behind why it is a good idea to wake up early and wake up on time, but we'll get to that in another video. So that was everything, that was where the 12 things that we wish we knew when we moved to Denmark for the first time. If you have some time, write down a comment and let us know what you wish you knew because I think we have covered like maybe the tip of the iceberg, there is like so yeah. much more to know. I think we can all help a lot, the new people that are coming to Denmark in January and in August. And I think they will find this video eventually. So if you comment down below, I think they will find your comment and it can change someone's life. Yes. Kind of what we hope to do here. Exactly. I think that's it. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time.